Hello, and welcome to uh, Front End Web 2.3 Single Page Applications. Uh, the goal of this class will be to make single page web applications using JavaScript and React. And, uh, you know, in the first lesson, what we're going to do is we'll just kind of go over the um, basic concepts and review a little bit of React and why we're going to use React. So right now I'm on the um, course syllabus page here, and I'll put a link in the description. And if we scroll down here, you'll see that we have some links up here to important um, pages. Uh, here's a link to the course website, which is really just these GitHub pages, right? So, so you can view everything here in, the, in GitHub, um, in the lessons folder, or you can view it in, um, in the web page format here. Um, you can uh, go to the class link here. This goes to the Zoom classroom. And this link is where you'll turn in your work on Gradescope, okay? Uh, down below here, we have the class schedule, right? And so um, this shows all the lessons that will be coming up. We're gonna do lesson number one right here, um, React and functional programming. And then we're gonna work on the first homework assignment here, which is a um, kind of a shopping cart product list website, right? We'll have a bunch of data that we pull in and we turn each one of those data items into an, an object on the screen, right? Okay, so why don't we get started? Um, one more note here, you can also go to the website for the class here. So this link right here is actually the same one that we see right here, okay? So I'm gonna go to, um, to the first lesson right here. I'll click on this. And um, this is the lesson page here. And I'm actually going to click on this link right here that goes to a slides version. The slides are really just this same page, but in slide format. So all the content is the same. The slides are generated from these, these markdown pages. I'm going to go click on the slides link here, and then we'll just go through the slides quick. So, uh, you know, the review here is, or the, the goal here is to review React. You know, if you have some experience, a small amount of experience with React, you're, you're doing well. Um, we'll cover the rest in class. The learning objectives for today are to uh, create React components, um, use JSX, and use functional programming ideas like map, filter, and reduce. Um, so what is a single page application? Well, a single page application is different from a traditional website where you have multiple pages that all link to each other. A single page application is one web page that is run by JavaScript and JavaScript um, you know, controls what you see on the page. It, it updates the content of the page and changes what you see as you click on things. So you're never actually loading a new page or navigating to a new location. Think of, um, you know, Gmail as a good example of the single page application, okay? I would say like Gmail was the application that started it all, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, what are the pros and cons of single page applications? Well, uh, single page applications allow us to do more stuff, like we can have um, a page that remembers its state, like it has data and you know options and selections that a user has input and it remembers those. If we navigate to a new page, we kind of lose the state of the current page, right? Um, and there's exceptions to that, but, uh, but that's the general idea, right? Okay, it also gives us a chance to add like a lot of interactivity that you can't have on a multi-page site, right? Because every time you load a new page or navigate to a new page, everything kind of gets reloaded and started over from, from, you know, nothing, right? Okay, you can, here's a link to read more about single page applications, so you can follow that and read up on it. Um, let's talk about JavaScript for a minute, and uh, one of the things we're going to use in class is we're going to use React. So let's talk a little bit about, like, why we choose React for our building our single page applications, because there's several other libraries out there that you could use. Um, I'm going to go to this link here <coughs> and open up the state of JS. <clears throat> this is a um, a website that um, aggregates uh, developer data. So you know, developers um, they pull developers and ask developers about what tools they're using and what tools they want to learn more about. 
and uh, which tools maybe that they don't like using. And they kind of aggregate all that information here. So if we look at this chart right here, this one says, you know, have used, you know, we up in this corner, this is like have used and have a positive opinion. So this is like have used, but uh, have a negative opinion, right? And if you're down here, you have not used, right? So if you look here, you can see like, uh, you know, Jest is very popular, Redux is very popular, Re React is also very popular. It's up in this, like people have used this and they have a positive experience, right? Um, so let's also look at the um, front end frameworks here. So I'm gonna go to front end frameworks. And if we look at React, you can see it's very popular from 2016 all the way through 2019. And, um, you know, I guess uh, Svelte is gaining popularity. Um, it beat out React by 1%, but React has a, a lar lot longer maturity and a larger user base, right? So it's a, still a pretty popular tool, right? It's beating out all these other ones, right? Svelte just came in in, in 2019, right? But uh, React is pretty popular, and that's why we're going to use it, okay? And you can study that. There's a lot of good information in this developer survey. Um, so why learn React? Well, you know, um, it's one of the most popular libraries out there. Let's go to this link here and take a look. And um, you'll see here that um, maybe I wonder if I can put spelt on this list here. Well, I guess I can't pull that one up. I was well, I guess it did pull it up here. Yeah, so Svelte has a very small user base, right? So they're way at the bottom here. They are popular though, right? React, on the other hand, has a huge number of downloads. These are This chart here is showing downloads on NPM. So how many people in the world are using React, right? So, and we're comparing it here to Angular, Svelte, and Vue. Okay, so React, you can see, has a huge popularity. It's used everywhere, right? So that's another reason why we're going to use it. Um, so React uses um, functional reactive programming. It's in the name, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about functional programming today, okay? Um, here's a list that actually goes off the bottom of my slides here, but there's so many people are using React these days. It's a good thing to learn, right? So if you went into a job interview at any of these companies, they would be using React and they might expect you to know a little bit about it, right? So, um, and you can look, if you look in the regular um, course page, it, the, you know, the slides don't show everything, but the full list of companies is there. And actually I couldn't list them all. There's hundreds, right? Okay, so uh, so like I said, uh, React is a super popular framework, right? Um, uh, let's see. So um, yeah, so expect to see it on, on a job, right? Um, so what exactly is React? Let's take a look at it, right? So um, what does React say about React? React describes itself as a JavaScript library for building user interfaces, okay? So React is a library for building user interfaces. It's kind of like the view in model view in the model view controller paradigm. I think it actually kind of en encapsulates all that stuff, but it's really focused on generating the views. Okay, it's a library for generating what we see in the browser. Okay, let's talk a little bit about functional programming for a moment. So functional programming is an idea of um, building software with functions, right? You could compare it to object-oriented program where object-oriented programming is the idea of where the basic building blocks of software is the object, right? In functional programming, the basic building block that we're going to use is a function, right? Functional programming has a lot more to it too. Like, for example, people will say that it um, eschews or avoids shared mutable state, right? And you know, we can get more into the details of that later, but um, for right now, just think about functional programming as building um, applications around functions, right? Where object-oriented programming, we might build applications around objects. Okay, so reactive programming is a little harder to explain, but let's kind of um, just del just touch our toes in the water here. Um, reactive programming is building applications with event streams. So the general idea here is that we send a message or we, you know, send some data through the system and the system automatically updates. 
this is different from the way that you might have been programming before where you um, you send a message and then when you get a new value or you change a value what you do is you also run the step of updating the user interface with reactive programming what we're going to do is we're going to change a value and the user interface will update reactively like it'll update automatically okay and you'll see that happen with the components that you create anytime you change uh, props on a component or update state, the component automatically redraws itself, right? So let's talk about React's core features, okay? So there's three things that you really need to understand about React, and we'll get into those in the lesson today, okay? So the first is components. So components are the um, core building block of React. The next is JSX, and this is an extension of the JavaScript language that lets us write you know, JavaScript, but with an HTML syntax, and that HTML translates to the HTML that's generated by the component in the view, right? And then there's the virtual DOM. So the virtual DOM runs in the background, and React uses this to, um, you know, make its, its work more efficient, okay? So let's talk about components. So components are the view, right? So a component, every component represents one piece of your user interface. So if you see something on the screen, usually it's a component. There's a few components that you'll use that don't actually appear on the screen, but a majority of the components that you're gonna work with and that you're gonna write yourself are gonna translate to something that you see on the screen. So a component might be a button, a component might be a list of buttons, right? A component might be the heading on the page, a component might be your logo, a component might be the content of the page, okay? So the component is the view. And we, um, and like components can also encapsulate other components. So you could make a component that was a footer and that component might have a list component in it. And that com list component might have a list of links or a list of buttons, okay? Um, components are also reusable, right? So we can, um, we can use them like Lego blocks and we can build applications with components and then we can take a component out and put a different component in its place or we can, um, we can uh, you know, use the same component multiple times and in different locations in our app too, okay? So components generally um, you know, uh, uh, are, are generally like the, the basic building block of React applications, okay? Your project will be built from components. Um, most of the work you do write, writing your React apps will be writing components. Um, components can be put one inside the other Right, so you can have a child, a component that's a child of another component that's a child of another component. Right? Okay. Um, components can be objects, or in our case, they can also be functions. So this kind of relates to the functional programming idea. So our 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 components are all going to be functions. Right? Okay. And all those functions return something that the that the browser can display. Okay. Uh, Components encapsulate both the logic, right? So they, they have the logic and the display properties in them. So you can have components that are kind of smart. Like if you click a, a button or something, the component could keep track of the number of times you click that button, or it would know to load some data when you click the button. JSX. So JSX is an extension of the JavaScript language and it uses an XML syntax. Right, so XML is similar to HTML, so it will look like you're writing HTML inside your React components, but really what you're doing is you're writing in the JSX language, okay? So JSX has its own syntax too, and it extends the JavaScript syntax. So there's things that you can write in JSX that you can't write in normal JavaScript, okay? And we'll go over the syntax as we start writing components, okay? Um, yeah, so here's an example of some JSX. So here you can see I have a standard JavaScript function that returns something, and the something it returns looks like a block of HTML. But since this is not in a string, like it's not in a, you know, the quotation marks, right? Um, what we're doing is we're returning a block of JSX. And what's interesting about this is I'm gonna go to, um, I think I have a, a link here to Babel, right? You can go to, actually, I'll open that up right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the previous slide and I'm going to copy all of this. Okay. So I'm going to copy this block right here. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it into Babel, right? And so Babel is a tool that lets us, you know, convert um, JavaScript wit written in one, you know, style or syntax into another style or syntax, right? It translates, okay, or transpiles our JavaScript. So if I was to take that, that component that we wrote in the last example there, right, with, you know, it says it's got a div and a header and an h1, right, okay? If I paste it into Babel, you can see over on this side, it gives me a function that looks like this, right? And so this is the actual vanilla JavaScript, right, that, that this block of JavaScript would translate to, okay? So what does that mean to us? Well, you know, if any of you were to read this block and you understood the basics of JSX, you would say like, oh yeah, this is going to generate an, a block of HTML that looks exactly like what I see here, right? If you were to look at the code on this side, you would have a hard time saying what this was going to output. Right? It would be very difficult to say that this was going to create a div that had a header inside it and that div had a class name of app and the app had a class name of app header and then it would have an h1 that said hello world inside it. Right. So, you know, the reason we have JSX is because it allows us to write with an HTML like syntax that mirrors the output that we're going to get in the browser, right? So that makes our work a lot easier. There are some things that we need to learn about JSX though, right? So for example, you can't use the name class and anytime you would use the name class, you use the name class name instead. So there's an example, right? Okay. So uh, let's move on. So what do you need to know, right? So you need to know that um, the view part of a component is written in JSX. JSX is an extension of the JavaScript language, so it's it's part of the JavaScript language, but it's new features, okay? JSX just compiles to vanilla JavaScript, which is what we saw here with Babel. So when we build our React projects, behind the scenes, the build system will turn our JSX code into vanilla JavaScript. So you can't use JSX in the browser directly. It has to be transpiled into this type of JavaScript, but we won't need to do that. We'll have a tool that does it for us, okay? And uh, JSX has its own special syntax, so we'll talk more about that coming up. Oh, so the virtual DOM. So the virtual DOM um, is a tool that sits in React, and normally we don't have to um, deal with it. It's just in the background, but as a React developer, you should know that it's there, okay? You can follow this link and um, read up on the virtual DOM. Essentially, the virtual DOM mirrors what you have in the browser's DOM, but what React does is it updates all of the things that are changing in the virtual DOM, and then it makes any changes that happen there appear in the real DOM. So the key feature here that you have to understand is that you'll never update the DOM directly with a React app. Okay, so you'll never use something like document.getElementById. Okay, you'll always do your updates through a component using the React um, syntax for that, okay, or using the React code. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, so you know, here's an example here. This is something you would never do is document.getElementById, right? And the reason is if you update the, the, the actual DOM, the browser DOM, and then the 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 um, virtual DOM doesn't update, it can overwrite your changes. It won't be aware of your changes, right? So we need to make sure that any changes to the DOM that we make happen in the virtual DOM and the virtual DOM will handle updating the real DOM, right? And why do they use the virtual DOM? Is They use the virtual DOM because it's much more efficient. It's a lot faster, right? Updating the DOM in the browser is a slow operation. So the virtual DOM like speeds things up and it adds a lot of efficiency. Okay, um, yeah, so here's the things you need to know. Um, React keeps track of all components in the virtual DOM. Making change to the DOM directly does not work in React or it causes problems or unexpected conditions, right? Um, manipulating the DOM with React should always be done or handled through a component, okay? In other words, never use document get element by ID. 
right? Or jQuery and any of the jQuery, you know, update methods if you're familiar with that. Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to stop the video here. So that's kind of our introduction to React and, and the three core features. And uh, we're going to move on to this homework assignment here, which will be to make this, this product list. Okay, so I'll handle that in the next video. And uh, thanks for watching.